For a little background on me in this project, I am a digital video major and greatly enjoy storytelling and media. Regarding more film-specific projects, I love the importance of injecting every facet of production into storytelling, to the music, lighting, and of course, the visuals. These details heighten the experience. Today, specifically, we will be focusing on color and the accessibility of my website. To the project. Film Moods is a website created to provide an accessible color filter for those learning about video and color theory. For practical use, you would upload an MP4 file of your choice. For this example, I'll be using original videos I created. When the video is uploaded, you can start it. When started, it will feature a second screen showing the video which will feature the color filter. This is where you can experiment with colors. When going into the colors tab, and choosing the color of your choice, the second screen will change after pausing and starting the video again. Something to notice is when you change colors, the description below changes with it. These descriptions provide some insight into the color that is chosen and what they are often interpreted emotionally as. Now, to present functionality to the prototype, I will show you some colors and what it does to our video. Um, including the saturation value as that's an important function. So uh, let's start with the color. We'll do green as it was with green before. Um, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty dark. And now if we want, we can lighten it up a bit. And now it's not so overpowering. If we'd like, we can add a little bit more to it. And it's just a bit there. Nothing too insane, nothing too much for this kind of video, which this video is a bit darker. So if we were to do, let's do a purple. And this is gonna be, that's actually quite good. I think that looks good. Now, uh, to provide more examples, let's go to a different video. And this is gonna be a, just more of a gif, if you will. But it's just the American flag. And now if we were to do, let's do a pink. And now since the saturation is really low, we can't really notice it, because some videos might just be so bright. But you now you can see it. Now that is a lot of pink. If we were to tone it down to a yellow, this is gonna be a lot of yellow but it's very bright. And if you were to just minimize the saturation just a bit, might be, oh, that's still too much. Okay, a bit more. And now that looks okay. It looks bright. And of course, if you don't have an idea of what you want to do with it, you can always look to the descriptions to see if um, you have a better insight on what the color will do. Another function to feature in the Colors tab is Custom. A custom color option allows the user to modulate the RGB values individually to allow further experimentation. Now for wanting to save what you've done, you'll see the Start, Stop, and Export buttons. When you want to start saving, pressing Start will begin to record the filtered video. Once done, you can press the stop button and your video is ready to be exported. Now that we've exported the video, we can take a final look. At the time of the stuff showcase, the code has been submitted to GitHub if anyone would like to try it out. And on screen, there will be a link provided. I would like to specifically thank a fellow student and tutor on campus, Preston Chapman. Their help with working on the code was invaluable and I greatly appreciate what I learned from them while working on this project. Lastly, I would like to thank the UAT and you, the audience, for this opportunity at the SIF Showcase. This project was admittedly not easy, especially the coding side of things. But besides that, I'm proud to overcome this challenge and move forwards towards graduation. Again, thank you.
Professor Bellinger for helping guide Corey on the finalization of the project. Thank you so much. Question. Uh, so, hello. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the challenges about coding, and you're not a coder. No. So can you talk a little bit about that part of the, the process? Because I know that was ultimately one of the barriers for you yes. being able to really envision what the end result was. So tell us about working with the program. Um, well, I realized that I was going to have a hard time coding. I just, I have a hard time understanding it, so I actually went into UAD and SRR as tutors, and I have a bit more programming experience, which is how I started uh, talking and uh, working with Preston a bit, and I mean, um, <laughs> Preston has been a big help, but I think the kind of the interesting part was I was able to pick up on uh, coding, because a lot of it is uh, repetitive in a way. Um, like. With the descriptions, uh, there is just a wall of code because every time uh, the color is chosen to whatever it is, it'll uh, have the um, description. It'll have the description, it'll have the sources, and they all have to be paired because you know if you do it out of order, it'll fall apart, which it did a few times. So there was that. Professor uh, Bowen? Yes, I just want to say that's a great uh, presentation and actually the whole website was and uh, just be able to see the change in color in the real time and to just say it on the field. I think so. I've seen that in courses before, but actually it's the first time seeing and change color um, on the video in the real time. It's awesome. Professor Prater? Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you to the coding world. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the rest of us. You did a good job with that. I like seeing that. Um, my quick question was, I noticed during the presentation, when you click the drop-down menu, it didn't appear on the screen. Now, now, did it appear on, on your screen? Yes. It, okay, and it should just, it was a recording yeah. issue, it wasn't a drop-down issue. Yeah, okay. I, uh, I meant to implement some like screenshots, but yeah, there is eight colors. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of colors, and then the custom color is, um, you can specifically change it with RGB. It's a bit intense, so like if you slide it just red, it will be bright red. So there is that. Okay. Professor Hansen? I really like the ease of use and the approachability of the app. Sometimes when an app is new, if there's too much going on, there, there's too many options, I'm like, I don't have time to learn this, and that one was really intuitive, um, something that I would just um, start using. Good job with that. Professor Portier? Love this topic. Awesome work. Thank you. Um, my question to you is, let's say I wanted to use color correction for a Western movie of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have the ability to go into black and white or go into sepia tone at all? Um, so for the black and white, we did not. We actually did have it initially, and I noticed because uh, the first video I showed, that I showed a stroll in the park was something I did here, uh, and I, I noticed it wasn't really good black and white, and I, I think that was a good point. Um, I mean, there is a brown filter, so there is the, you can kind of just lessen it a bit with the saturation, but I do think that's a good point with that black and white. I just have one last thing. So, um, I, I don't know if you know this, you, you have it on GitHub, right? Mm -hmm. If you make the repo name, your username, your, your GitHub your username.github.io, it becomes accessible to the web. And anyone who puts in your, your username.github.io, gets access to that website. Mm -hmm. So so you might want to do that so that you can just put put the website name there and anyone can go on and test it immediately. Good idea, yeah. Um, I just kind of made it. I never was really on GitHub. Yeah, so yeah. That's why yeah. it's, it's real easy. Yeah. You, you just make it the github. Dot, or the username dot github dot io as the repo name and then it, it's on the web. Dr. Smith? Yeah, I'm all about simplicity of customization and um, the video filters and things I use to be very immersive in a lot of things. My question for you is like, now that you've created this, what's the next step in the evolution of that specific project? Um, I'm not exactly sure. I, I, a big thing that I kind of wanted to point out with this is storytelling, because storytelling is a big thing for me. And especially just, I mean, even going to research, but like going into just my digital video classes, it's always, everything is detailed. Every little detail even to the color. It could even be something that's in the background or um, something on a character. Like it's just that. So I think that's why I wanted to do more 
color focus. Um, I think with getting into programming, I think it is still a little scary for me, so that's why I've definitely been uh, focusing more on the video aspect of things, but that was a great question. Thank you very much, Corey.